Hi everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonsai. Spinning around an azalea here. This is just your garden variety uh, upper midwest azalea, uh, hardy uh, to our zone. Uh, this one's called an orchid lights azalea. We're ready to put it in a bonsai pot. Uh, I want to make this into a, a bonsai tree. So the challenge for me in any uh, nursery stock is you don't know what you're going to get. Uh, you don't know what the uh, root structure is going to be like, and you don't know um, what the nabari area, you know, where your, where your root structure hits the uh, dirt, what it's going to look like. And in this particular tree, I've got a couple of little tiny shoots coming off right here. We'll obviously, or most likely, I should say, cut those off. It's separated into two trunks. I have no idea if they will be connected down below or if they're two uh, trees. I could end up making two bonsais out of this one pot, which would be kind of nice. Or if I decide to keep them together for a double trunk type design. However, this side right over here has three trunks already on this side. One, two, and three. So I have no idea what that's going to look like down below and how I can separate these out and probably possibly make a triple trunk out of this one and a single trunk out of this one. But first thing we have to do is break it up and uh, see what that root system is going to be like. So I have a just a container over here that I'm going to throw right on top of my turning table. We're just going to dig at it right here and uh, try to get this thing out of here and see what the root system is like. We want to be uh, you know, careful when we're taking the plant out of the pot. But it should come pretty easily. I haven't watered this one for about a week or so, so it's plenty dry, I think. Things will fall right apart. I've got some tools, starting to acquire some tools, not very many in my bones eye uh, career so far. So I typically use a fork to do some uh, early spreading of the dirt and see what's gonna happen when we separate this out. So what you're not able to see with the height of the blue uh, container here is, if you've not done these yet, you're gonna lightly take the fork and you're gonna be trying to break up the dirt around the uh, root system, trying to break as well, a few roots as possible, and just work it gently to see what's underneath. Uh, so we're just gonna keep getting all this dirt out, and you can see it's just hanging on by the, by the roots. A lot of root structure, very deep, and again, we'll be cutting a lot of that off, so you don't have to worry about breaking some of those fine tips at the end, because it's going to happen uh, inevitably. You're going to be more concerned with some of the bigger roots up in the higher part of the uh, root, root ball. So I can get some of these big chunks and already here I can see a nice big root right here that I try. I don't want to break that one off so much as these little ones. That's going to be a nice root connected up there somewhere. So, so here you can see the massive amounts of thin root structures that's going to be right here. Very very thin in nature and then, then you come up here a little bit further and here's the root that I was showing you from before. So we've got that nice little thick root right there. There's one coming in right there. And you can kind of see one right down in there. So we're going to look for all those roots, try to take care of them and not break them, and continue our process of repotting. I have my little chopsticks here, and my metal chopstick, or aluminum chopstick, I should say, can break up some of the dirt inside. You can poke some holes into the side to break up some of that dirt going to break some of those fine roots of course but uh, we're trying to break this out. If I used a tool like this I would cut the roots all off so I'd see that till later but I do have another poking stick this is a little bit uh, heavier duty not aluminum but steel try to break some of that out but my chopstick I like best because it's a blunt instrument and it's thick enough to get some breakage of the soil. This uh, azalea was pretty pretty heavily root bound into this uh, nursery plastic bucket and as you, as you can see now that I've kind of broken down the walls it's much wider with the root structure and not just so tight and compact and as I continue to move the soil a little bit it just makes it a little bit wider and shows all these little tiny roots on the edges that were really starting to take up the room in the pot more than likely leaving a little bit less uh, room for bigger growth with some of the medium intermediate roots and some of the bigger roots. 
just so much room was being taken up, of course, by the growing little, little uh, small root structure. So this is very thick roots right now. Uh, it looks, looks very dirt-like still. There is dirt pockets in here that I can come in and crumble with my fingers, but a lot of that is just the real, really fine roots of the azalea. So we're getting a lot more thick roots right in here. Uh, and it looks like my potential of having two bonsais out of this uh, is lessening and lessening as I get further down the pot here, or further down the root structure. These are all connected pretty strong right there. This is one giant root structure. So I'm going to have to make some decisions as to what kind of bones I'm going to want to make with this. Um, I think that's still probably one of the hardest part of my early bones I life uh, and career, if you will, is, you know, what am I going to do with this? Is this going to be a broom style? Am I going to make a formal upright or an informal upright at some point? Will I lean this in the pot this way or bring it back this way? Uh, what's going to be my front? A lot of decisions to be made. Those decisions will come in a little bit. We first have to get rid of a lot more dirt here and go through some of these roots and see what we're going to be starting to feel comfortable with cutting off in a little bit. So we'll just keep, keep plugging away. So we're making progress. A lot of these lower roots are going to be uh, eventually just really uh, trimmed off. So I'm not afraid of making some cuts right away just to make this a little bit more manageable. Because like I said, those are going to be all tucked away in a new pot anyway. We're going to make them shorter. So I just get a little trim in there. And I've discovered with a little bit further digging underneath, getting some of this uh, thicker dirt out of the bottom portions. And when I started to try to take a little bit of movement, these two are actually I think separate, uh, separated. I can separate them is what I'm trying to say. So as I carefully poke through the, with the, the blunt chopstick to not cut these uh, intermediate uh, branch, uh, excuse me, root, roots, um, I'm finding that these are tangled pretty good, but they might not be completely together. Um, even if I did split them apart and there was a little bit of a sore there, uh, in, in, in the root structure, there's a chance that they both could grow, but we want to have it a little, at least as damage as possible moving forward. When you first repot a bonsai tree or a tree from nursery to put into a bonsai, um, it's not necessarily imperative, I don't believe, um, that you get every speck of dirt off of this existing tree. The more you can get off without damaging the roots, that's, that's good. But when we're transplanting this from all soil to bonsai rock, uh, that's quite a shock to the system, right? We want to make sure I start watering this thing uh, more consistently than when it was in a nursery stock pot. And uh, with the bonsai soil, uh, it's going to have a lot more air in there, a lot more room for the roots, and uh, but a little bit of dirt in there for some nutrients and just to make this azalea. Azaleas, uh, from what I know about azaleas, do like a little bit more of that uh, organic material uh, versus the bonsai soil. Um, uh, that's going to be a little bit more of the pumice rock and lava rocks and not a lot of pine bark and dead branches and, uh, and, and soil dirt uh, versus the, the stone. So we're going to keep plugging away here. The nice thing about the fork again, or your bonsai rake, what it's doing is getting rid of that dirt and combing out these roots. And we're trying to get the roots always in a radial pattern when we're laying them down in our pots. We want to spread them out so we have them evenly all the way around as much as possible to balance the growth of the tree. So we want to spread this thing out in the end so we've got roots going all the way around in a nice radial pattern. It's going to be a little bit harder with this one with roots all over the place, uh, but we're going to be able to take care of that as best we can. I'm still stuck together. I have a nice little section of roots here now, and all the long dangly ones have been kind of trimmed off and pulled off a little bit. Um, so we're making some progress. So behind my fish tank here, I have some pots, There's some plants back here from my pond. So they just took it out of the water for you. and. Uh, 
after a little couple of shakes in the water and bringing it out, you can already see, I hope from there, how uh, these, these roots now are really coming to light and we don't see as much of that real fine uh, root structure than we started this process, but now we're seeing all these medium sized roots and uh, it's starting to look like I'm close to being able to either separate these things, or I will be separating them, but we'll be able to be looking at our bonsai pots soon to see which pot I'm going to pick and how these things are going to come together as a bonsai tree. I am super excited. There's a lot of gnarly looking, uh, a lot of gnarly looking root structure in there, which is kind of cool when you have that above the ground. You don't really see it when it's below the ground, but I'm hoping some of those maybe can be seen as a surface root and those get bigger over the years. And uh, when I see some of the bonsai pictures that are out there on the internet, when I look for design, uh, designs to uh, intrigue me and get me inspired, I do like seeing a lot of surface roots and seeing that structure. That's, I think that's fantastic. I am really close to separating this thing. Now there comes a time when, you know, again, I, I spoke to being patient before. There's a time when you kind of put your tool in there and give it a couple of shakes and you're going to hear some cracking. <laughs> you're going to break a few roots. You're just hoping to keep it at a minimum. But in order to make some movement, there's, there's some that are so tangled in here that it's just bound to happen. So I made this quite separated here. I've got two really nice root structures that are right here. Very nice, right there. They didn't break. This one broke off right there. It's still about two inches long. That can grow some new growth uh, in the near future, but that did have a little bit of breakage. I'm not terribly concerned with that at the moment because I have, so as I lift this up, I've got some roots separating. I got a nice big one I'm feeling right here, so I'm gonna pull that lower. I can't see where they're tangled yet. Which one goes to which tree? This one comes from that tree. There, I was able to just totally lift that one right up with my fingers. Look at the next one. Here's a big one right here. I'm pulling it out slowly, and I just pulled out all of that structure right there. That was all tangled up in there. Nice, uh, be able to ramify that, or excuse me, have some good radial patterns. There's some ramification in the roots. There we go. We have two trees. I'm gonna dunk them in the water, be right back. All right, so there we have it. Oddly enough, the bigger trunk with the, with the uh, bigger size of branches has the least amount of roots now left down there. I hope we have enough to uh, can sustain the growth and I'm not gonna cut these too much further back because I don't wanna I don't want to damage this one, uh, to stress this one out too much. And we'll get rid of that. And we're gonna first take the fork now and kind of see where these go. So again, this one was super tangled up, so we have a lot of gnarly, uh, really cool roots, but they're gonna be underground, so we're not gonna see the cool gnarl uh, gnarliness of that. But what we, what we can do when we plant this one, now you'll see, this has a lot of structure out to the to your right, my left, right there, but there's nothing over here. So we want to try to balance that out. But all those roots are smashed down and going down and tucking underneath. This one in particular goes down under here and curves way back here. I'm gonna have to see if I can lay this one out to the my right side, your left side, when we plant this one without breaking it and snapping it. And here I can move it a little bit. Got some big, uh, big uh, roots here that will will do some bending. We'll try to get that all smoothed out. Got some leftover dirt up here by the trunk from the original soil. I'll probably dunk it in water one more time. Right when we're, I'll probably leave it in water for a little bit while we're preparing our pots. All right. So there is. Tree number one, right there, that's gonna be an azalea. And it looks like very nice looking roots right there. I'm very, very happy with that. And we're gonna see if we're gonna put that thing at an angle like this, or we're gonna go straight up for now, just to give it some growth. Will that be the front? So we'll put that in some water. Let that sit there for just a little bit. And take a peek at this other one. Now this one is all over the place. Now very thin root structure again, as far as depth of a, of a radial pattern. 
if you can see on camera, I'm not quite sure, it's got this very big swirly root, some amazing curvature. It would be great if that was above the root line. That would be some amazing movement in this bonsai. But it's underneath the ground. <laughs> um, but we'll put that in the ground, in the new soil, and maintain it for a little while until we repot it again. Uh, that might be a, a root that we cut a little bit more aggressively because it's so thick and we can uh, maybe stop it at the growth up here and then more roots can grow this way. But again, I'm going to have to lay this root right here. I have to lay this root out this way, like that. So it goes off to this side. Make it make it just a little bit shorter, perhaps. And this can go straight out here, and this can come over here, and then these over here a little bit uh, a little bit tough, and they're growing underneath this big old curly gnarly thing. So we'll have to make a couple decisions there. Maybe make a couple cuts. So I think we're ready to con start considering our pots. So I'm going to put this in water, get some pots set up, uh, a couple of pots to choose from. We'll go from there. Now we have to pick a pot. I'm a bonsai on the cheap kind of guy, but I do have uh, a couple of decent pots lying around and some pots I ordered this uh, winter. I have these plastic ones. Got the holes right in there. I got a square one and I got an oval. I mean a rectangle, rather. So the nice thing about these two, um, besides that they're inexpensive, is uh, I can have these two same style trees in two different pots and check them out. So this is the smaller of the two trees right now. And if I put that right in there, the roots fit plenty well. Uh, no bonsai soil in there yet, but the roots looks like they would fit in there and there's still room for it to grow. I'd love the next size up though. I think that would allow more uh, room for those roots to grow. But this is pretty decent right here. And I can trim the roots just a little bit more. But So that's one option for that tree. And this tree, like I said, has a little more roots. It's a little bit bigger and sits a little bit more funny. I might make it an angle tree. Don't know if I'll do that or something like this and have everything grow upwards for our uh, informal upright or a, or a slight slant here. Um, so that's how that kind of looks there, whether it's on that side or that side for you. So I'll take a peek right there. I'm not quite sure. The other pots that I have, I do have this really nice big pot that I uh, got at the uh, Minnesota Bonsai Society auction last fall. Um, I'm a member of the Minnesota Bonsai Society, actually the acting president. And uh, this would give it a lot more room to grow in there for sure. Um, uh, the, the tree is maybe not big enough for this pot quite yet, but it would allow for that root growth uh, and a lot of room for it to spread out. I do like the depth of this pot and that's kind of nice. I like the angles of this pot. Um, if this flowers up for me this year, it would be very pretty in the end. Or the bigger one here. This is a little bit bigger tree. Again, maybe this would be more straight up and down if I put it in this pot instead of at an angle. I like that as a possibility. Now I have a couple other trees that I'm going to be repotting in the next couple of uh, uh, weeks or a month or so, and I think I want to save that pot for one of those trees, so I don't think I'll use that one. I have another pot that's of the same kind of ceramic make, a nice little legs on there, square pot, very similar to the square pot here. Just a little bit more room, perhaps. I think the dimensions are awfully similar. I have a little bit of bonsai soil in there right now that I'm recycling and maybe be using for this project in a moment, but there again would be the tree, and this pot, this direction, if that front was your side, or if I made this the front for you folks, um, this has a nicer bit of movement, what I'm seeing, but it has this branch coming right out at me. So if I turn that around at you, it has that middle branch coming right out at you. The lines are kind of cool that way. This way the lines are pretty cool too. Um, and that back, this back branch now won't be maybe in the way. So I can maybe put it in that one right there. So that's another one for me to decide. I also have um, thin pots that are not going to work right now, probably just a little bit too thin for these guys. Um, always could take a look real quick just to see. That'll be very nice in the future. I actually like that a lot. My nervousness with this is this is my first azalea, and I don't know that I want to put this azalea in such a shallow pot right now. Um, uh, I'm going to see how it grows in bonsai soil. Uh, maybe mix with a little bit of organic stuff in there and this just doesn't give me as much room maybe to do that but boy does that look nice i really like that especially if this thing flowered up that would be really pretty this is what i'm looking at i'm showing you the other side but this is what i was looking at 
or possibly this right here. All right, so I like that as an option, but it's just not deep enough. I also have a couple of these pots along, 12 inches, uh, uh, 12 by 9 or so. And uh, so this would have plenty of room for the roots to grow on this one. Uh, I can get a lot of soil in there. That could do something really nice for you there. There's that angle for you. That angle, this side or that side. I don't know if I want it to go in that pot or not. And you have this guy right here. It has that, that sharp angle could be made right here uh, to see where that grows. That could be kind of cool. I like that. Straight up and down, I don't like this one as much in this pot because it's not enough space covered, perhaps. All the root, all the trunks there gathered together. I'd maybe cut a few off and do this nice angle like this. So I've decided to go with my uh, new plastic square pots with this. And I think I will make this my front so this branch doesn't protrude out in front of us. And I can put this a little bit like that and we'll just let it grow this year and see what happens. I won't do any, any pruning today with it. We've got these buds that are wanting to shoot. We're gonna put this back in the cold frame before it gets too used to this warm weather. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. So first off, I've got a mixture of some uh, Minnesota Bonsai Society bonsai soil that we ordered as a club. It has primarily pumice and lava rock with a few other uh, uh, style uh, rocks in there or um, soil, grit, whatever people call it um, as a mixture. Now remember I want to spread these roots out as best I can for a nice radial pattern. I want these to grow out and up. I just broke a little root there um, while trying to do that. So I'm pretty close liking it the way it is, but I'm going to go ahead and get rid of a little bit more of these elongated ones. we got some growth in here that we can go ahead and just give it a little trim. And it fits in the pot a little bit better. I don't want to get rid of too much, like this long one right here, but I'm going to cut it just a little bit here. Some of these get really long. All right. So I'm just going to stop right about there. And I've got some bonsai soil in there, as you saw me pour in there. And I'm just going to go ahead and position this where I can see it. This won't be as easy for you to see. But I want to see where this is going to go. And try to flatten out some of these roots and pull them up and around so they have a chance to grow a little more radially. All right. Get it in the pot. This isn't a heavy enough tree where I'm going to worry about wiring it into place. I'm going to cut a root right there based on where it fits in the pot. And uh, I feel pretty good about it. So I've got it laid in like that. I'm going to make sure I can see where I want it to be. I don't want my tree to be exactly perfectly straight, so I'm going to go off a little bit to the right. And spreading out the roots a little bit. Again, so the radio, and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, go ahead and fill up my pot a little bit with some of my bonsai soil. I'm using recycled old little mini pots for the shovel here. Bonsai on a budget. So I got my first little bit of rocks in there, just below the top of the surface. Looking pretty good, feeling pretty strong about it. Now this does want to bounce back a little bit here, but one of the things we're gonna do when we repot our bonsai trees is we're gonna use our tool to pound down the soil, packed up the soil a little bit. So what the chopstick is used for is to get rid of some of those air pockets. We want to not break the roots down below, but we want to shove some of these rocks and fill in some of those air pockets made with this, this larger size gravel and the root structure down there. So I'm just trying to tuck these rocks in there and people give it a nice little shove. The bamboos have a little bit more of a tapered point to it to get in there and put a little uh, downward pressure. This one works pretty well, I like it. 
I mean, I'm, you notice I'm not just poking it. Every once in a while, I'm giving it a good wobble. Everybody's trying to get those rocks in there. You can also put some pressure down with your hands to get those rocks in place. And we always want our bonsai trees to be leaning a little bit towards us, not away from us. And so I have it leaning towards me a little bit more and hope that it stays there. And right now it's having a little bit of trouble staying perfectly straight there. I'm trying to get some rocks down there in between those points. Rocks down underneath on this side. I'm going to put a little bit more in there now. Because I want rocks on this back side tucked in underneath those roots so it doesn't want to pop up as much. And of course just the weight of the rocks holds the roots in place, holds the tree in place. This is a tree that's borderline. I should have maybe wired it into this pot. I chose not to for this demonstration. Um, I got a root sticking up right here. That's really light and fine. And I can take my blunt end of the chopstick and my finger and tuck that in there. So it goes down deep and the rocks cover it up. Nice. I have a little bit more room. Nothing like using your bare hands sometimes, getting your hands dirty. Now, so right now my tree is leaning a little bit, so I can try to shimmy it around a little bit to make it stand a little bit more upright where I want it. So I want to make sure that I just twist it a little bit, and then I can shove those rocks down in there, and it gives me a little more of the design I want. Now, I completely neglected this little guy right here. Now, that's not going to be anything that's useful for me, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut that right off. I should have done that earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and dig down a little bit, find its base. And now it is gone. That's not going to serve me any purpose that I want. And so I'm going to go ahead and continue to pound a little bit as I restructure where I want this to stand. Feeling really good and tight along the edges down here. A couple of loose spots down in by the roots. And again, it's going to want to bounce back up a little bit. So I'm going to have just a little bit more rocks. I want to make sure those rocks are going to push that down in that area so the rock roots or the tree, excuse me, won't come bouncing back up. Now, of course, I could take the whole tree out and try to reposition a little bit more, but it's just off center right now. As long as I can punch these rocks into the right spot and get this to stay, I'll be okay. With a couple of weeks of watering um, and settling and some root slow growth, it'll slowly take its shape. Now, so I have it right here as the front. It's a little twisted more than I want. This also looks decent as a front, but again, it has that branch in front coming out at you. But we'll see what it does. I just want to see if it maintains its growth, and we can always reposition in the pot at a later time. So there you go, azalea number one. We'll just uh, stop there and see what I want to do with azalea number two. Okay, I have decided to go with the rectangle pot for this uh, other part of my azalea. And right now, I've got some bonsai soil on the bottom. I've cut a few of the roots just to make it a little bit more manageable in here there's a lot of roots in here that are still kind of well not a lot but there's some tangled around again i'm trying to make that radial pattern spread out on all sides as equal as possible uh can kind of see a little bit there with with how they're spreading out a little bit harder to see with that color rock in there i suppose got some some fine some small some medium and a couple of large roots i'm spreading them out and then I do think I want to angle this one. Um, I did I did do some cutting in the back here. There's a little cut right there. I cut a, the, the middle trunk right off. This is the second trunk and this was the fourth set of trunks. And I made the cut too close, but I have one growing branch left. I'll just see if they survive. I'm gonna go a little bit at an angle on this one and let it grow out this way for a, a movement to my right, your left. I'm looking at it as the, as the front right now. And I'm going to go ahead and get some soil in there. Now again, this is a tree at this angle. I might be in trouble without a wire to hold it in, but I'm not overly concerned. I've transplanted enough bonsai in my time that this one's not 
terribly heavy tree either, and with with some proper punching down of the rocks, I should be able to get this in the direction that I want. Okay, so I got it slightly in the back, I got it slightly to the right, and I'm leaning it to the right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and start to punch down the rock. We wanna get rid of those air pockets again, and this is also gonna help stabilize the tree down in there, because it's gonna put rocks in between the gaps, there are a lot of bigger roots on this one, so there's a lot of possibility of some I got some roots that just popped up right here, which I can just kind of push back down. It depends on my angle of this tree where these roots will finally find their way to the end. I'll put more rocks on top. Right now it's standing up pretty good right the way it is. So I have this leaning over where I want, looks pretty good. This branch could come over here eventually. This one can go straight up. I might now, this might be leaning a little bit more than I wanted, but for right now, when I repot this in a year or two, I, maybe I can reposition the growth of this tree. You can tell when you're pushing down on the chopstick. I hit some points where it won't go any further. That's where the root structure is thickest. There's a little bit of uh, organic material in this soil that I have here besides the lava rock and pumice that pr pr predominantly uh, is this soil. So that'll be good for the azaleas. They do tend to like that, I've been told. So there we go, just below the surface. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in my pot right here so I can water it for you guys. So there's your side of the tree if we were to look at it that way as a front in the future if it looks better. Um, or this is the front. Got a nice slanting azalea bush that will start to grow up here now and I can make it a slant style. I like that so far. It would have been nicer maybe to put it over here. Um, but I can put a little uh, moss over on this side and uh, later on and we'll see it. We'll just see how this one grows. I just want these to be repotted, put them back in the cold frame and be good to go. So, bones eye on the cheap. I recycle all my juice containers and with a drill bit, make some drill holes and I have a watering can. So I'm able to give this a good soaking, make sure all, excuse me, make sure all those roots are taken care of. I got that going. And then that's draining through. So we got some good drainage there and we're ready to go. So we've made this bonsai into a pot. I think that's looking pretty good. The size fits. Placement again, your personal preference. You like it over more here. I'm just gonna leave it there for now and uh, just make sure I get this back in the cold frame. We had two azaleas before, we have our one before, we have two now. So Dave Weiss for Dave Bonsai and we'll catch you on the next one.